inside this very weird box with a Chinese lady saying that it's very good product, there was the cheapest RAM I could buy on Amazon, and it's 6,000 megahertz DDR5 with actual decent timings, 32 gigabyte of, and all of that while actually looking pretty nice. It was actually looking too nice in the pictures. I thought it was gonna come to my house and look completely different because in the pictures, it basically looked like some Trident Z G-Skill Royale from the DDR4 series clone. And the DDR4 Royales from Trident Z actually were my favorite RAM from the DDR4 era. So I figured, hey, it's now on discount. You can buy 32 gigs for under 80 bucks, basically cheaper than I could buy a 5,600 megahertz kit for. So I thought, let's order it, let's put it into my next budget build and let's see how they are. And it turns out they arrived and I opened up the package and they actually look even better in person than they did in the Amazon image. Now, of course, the design is not as refined as the Royals because the Royals actually look very polished and the diamond finish on top looks very cool. This one feels a bit plasticky once you have it on ends and it is a bit bigger than the Royals because of course it has a lower cost and less time engineering it. However, once mounted, it looks very good. I will show it to you on the test bench, but also just tuned off, it looks very nice. And in this very cheap budget build, it really helps making it look unique and it will help selling the build. So from an aesthetic standpoint, I was very surprised by how this kit was performing, but the actual performance is what we care about. So first of all, I just plugged it in in this Intel build because lately I find this is the best value you can get in the used market. And uh, this kit has dual XMP and EXPO timing. So it's gonna be compatible for both AMD and Intel, which is something we cannot say of every kit lately. And after plugging it in and turning on the XMP, it actually worked out of the box, even with a 13700F, which is not the best CPU IMC wise, and even with a very cheap used B760 motherboard from ASUS. So first impressions in terms of compatibility are also great. We need to take a better look at specs. So I opened up CPU-Z and we went in the SPDM memory specs and we went looking. It turns out it's a Micron kit. Now I do prefer Hynix for DDR5 in general. But if you're not going after MDI performance for 2x24 gigabyte sticks, and if you're not really looking for the lowest possible latency, but you're looking for a 6000 MHz kit, maybe to put on a Ryzen system where 6000 MHz is the sweet spot, you don't really care about getting the lowest possible latency because maybe you don't have the best motherboard, maybe you don't have the top of the line CPU, some average tuned Micron RAM at 6000 MHz is still going to perform ages in front of some of the early stages DDR5, which some people have, those 50 to 100 megahertz kit, which we paid so much for back in the day. So spec-wise, they also check out. Also, the XMP and EXPO profile is set with a very low voltage, 1.25 volts, which means if you tune the voltage up to 1.4, you can easily reduce the latency. And I found I was able to get fully stable on this RAM kit. CL32. Now it is not a massive jump, but it is a decent jump by just increasing the voltage on the DRAM and playing around with the settings a little bit. Now, of course, I do have a full guide on the channel for DDR5 tuning, both on Intel and on AMD. I basically follow the guidelines I gave. And again, Micron is not the best performer, but for the price, this RAM checks out. So in short, I am fully recommending it. It's Juho RAM, Never heard of the company before. It doesn't even have a model number. It just said Juhor Jazer Ram is what they're called. I completely recommend them. They are also sold on AliExpress. It turns out I will try to put a link both on Amazon and on AliExpress uh, in case they're not in stock on Amazon anymore. But what I think is happening is they are trying to enter a new market. And to do that, they probably price them a little bit lower. They, they're probably not really turning a profit at this price right now, uh, if I had to guess, and they will probably increase the price in the future as people try them out and people like me make videos about them and we say they're great. The design is cool, okay? But if the price goes up to around 100 bucks or over 100 bucks, I wouldn't buy them because the latency is good, but for 100 bucks today, you can get some like branded 
really good DDR5 from Kingston, Patriot Viper, and all the major brands, which is gonna severely outperform this. And it's not like the King Bank RAM, which we tried from AliExpress, which if you're considering like unbranded, lesser known brands motherboard, check out my King Bank RAM review video. Because the King Bank one, it is not as cheap as this, but for the same price which you pay for uh, some RAM from a reputable brand, you can buy some King Bank RAM, uh, and it's the same chips and they are better tuned and you're paying them basically the same with a better tune or if, if you want to look at it the other way you're paying less uh, for a certain tune of memory so i think this one is only worth it uh, as long as it is under the 100 bucks price point and if you like the looks but it's actually an interesting find and i thought i'd make a video about it with that said if you guys tried any other juhor jazer ram let me know down below and if you have other similar ram which you think are, is a good buy out there you want me to try it please let me know so I can buy them and review them for you guys. And also, if you try this one out, let me know how it goes. Let me know if you like it. And see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.